only started racing quite late in my life. We went to uh, race at Oran Park in the V8 Supercars Grand Finale. Also racing was this category that I'd heard of but never really seen called Group C and Group A. I went down to these pits and wandered around these cars and it sort of all came flooding back my childhood memories. These were the old Bathurst cars. And I thought, I've got to be doing this. I was very lucky to get such an iconic car as, as this one. It turned out that this car was actually a very original race car and it had an unbroken line of history from when it had finished racing at Bathurst in 1984 right through to 2009. The car was originally built for the Roadways Racing Team. The first race was in September 82 and uh, Steve Harrington, young Steve Harrington went out on the Saturday afternoon in practice and slammed it straight into the wall at the end of uh, the straight at Oran Park. And that became a kind of a pattern for this car. I watched old footage where Mike Raymond, the, the famous Channel 7 commentator, is talking to Alan Grice and they're talking about Elvis. He goes, why do you call this car Elvis? He said, oh, it's had more hits than Elvis. The racing class that uh, I compete in with the car requires the cars to be presented in, in, in a particular livery for a particular event and the, the mechanical specification has to match that event and livery. The cars have to be the original cars. You can't reproduce a car. This car itself, because it's had so many hits, I can say hand on heart the, the floor pan, the turret, the firewall, um, and some of the hanging panels on this side would be the original ones. Most on that side I've replaced twice myself in my period of driving it. I had a, a fairly substantial accident in Phillip Island at one time, which was um, I ran out of talent. Turned it in the wall, shot it down the wall on pitch straight, and that required quite a lot of surgery. Ironically, you, you buy a $300 Commodore shell that's perfectly good, cut it up and spend $30,000 fixing an old one. And the joke about striped paint, I, I know it's rare, but it's also expensive. <laughs> Under the bonnet, where it all happens, it's actually a, a very closely production-based motor. Uh, the heads can't be modified, so they're factory heads. Uh, valve sizes are very strict. You're not allowed to, you know, pour or open up the heads. Where you get the power out of them is uh, the camshaft choice, and that still is a dark art. A little bit over 400 horsepower at the flywheel, um, so not a huge amount, but it's 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 delivered exceptionally well. We've got uh, Weber carburetors, uh, the downdraft Webers. They don't rev particularly high, um, so probably high sixes, six seven, six eight, and that's simply because with the standard heads and the standard inlet manifold, you simply can't get any more fuel and air into the engine. So there's no point having something that revs to seven and a half. The the power and the torque curves really flatten out at that that magical high six, six seven fifty, something like that. So the major deviations in these cars, when you look at them, they're, they're big and they're bold and they're fat, and and really that's just. The, the body kit and, and the wheel choice on them. The wheels themselves, these are uh, original uh, BBS design. These wheels are only about 12 or 18 months old, had them remanufactured to match the original. In this particular category and, and in the period, they had to keep all the uh, interior trim in the car apart from the carpet. So people always marvel that we've got the original dashboard and the door trims and the rear seat and all the roll cage having to go through everything. Driving the cars, as an experience, there's not a lot going on on the dash. We have some very basic idiot lights. I don't know why they call them that. I understand completely what they do. Four-speed gearbox, uh, which is a, it's a big clunky, lot, lots of, it, it's, a, it's a tight change, but there's a lot of throw and travel in the, in the gear chain. So you have to be quite patient in pulling it through the gears. As I found in the early days of racing, if, you, if you're too, Impatient with it, you end up uh, stripping teeth off uh, of cogs and things. I think the appeal of these cars in this particular era of racing, as an impressionable young kid, I was watching this car race at Bathurst. I can look at the old footage, I can look at all the books, and there's my car sitting in those pages. I do have the opportunity to race this car at Bathurst every couple of years, 
and it's, it, it couldn't be better. Driving down Conrod Strait, you almost have to pinch yourself that this is actually happening.